Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I'm gonna to keep talking about praying effectively. And, but I want to lay some groundwork with you as well because what I find is that the church a lot of times is just reaching out here grabbing at words and we don't really know why we're saying them and, and we're not clear on how to pray. I want to read you a scripture though and I'm, I'm going to show you this. In Luke chapter 11 verse 1, watch this. And one time when Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he finished one of his followers, his disciples, ask him, Lord, teach us to pray as John has taught his followers. What we see here is so Jesus taught his disciples to pray, and it was standard practice because John the Baptist taught his followers to pray. Did you know in the early church they taught people how to pray effective prayers, and we lost that somewhere along the line. And now what we have is a body of Christ that does not understand how to effectively pray, and that's why we don't get what we pray for. We ask amiss, we don't state it out clearly, and we don't declare what God has already told us to declare. Now watch this, I wanna show you this quote. Uh, this is by T.L. Osborne, and this is one of my favorite quotes. It, he says, You should never ask God to do what he has said that he has already done, and you should never ask God to do what he told you to do. Now, that's a mouthful, but let me break it down for you. Did you know that I should never ask God, really, realistically, to heal someone? because they're already healed, right? Let's see this. By his stripes, we were healed. That's 1 Peter 2.24. Jesus, on the Roman whipping post, his stripes, the beating he took, paid for our healing. Our healing has already been done, and it's complete. So realistically, I should not ask God to heal someone I can ask God to let it be done unto that person according to his word, and his word has been settled in heaven and on earth. And he settled healing even before the foundations of the earth. He knew what he was going to do. That's in the Bible. He said that. But when it was paid for and a finished work is on that whip, Roman whipping post with Jesus. Now... The other half of T.L. Osborne's statement says you should never ask God to do what he told us to do. Did you know Jesus told us to go out and heal the sick? He said that believers would lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So what we're doing is asking God to do something he's already done and we're asking him to do something that he told us to do. So I want to give you a foundation of truth in the Bible and show you that healing has already been done. Let's go over to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, and it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus, God has given us every spiritual blessing in all of the heavenly realms. Okay, so all of the things that's in the spirit realm, and healing is in the spirit realm, it's already a finished work. I'm gonna give you another scripture. Watch this, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse two says, at the right and favorable time, I heard your prayers. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Now that's a quote from God from Isaiah 49, eight. What I wanna to get to is the next verse. But I tell you, behold, the right favorable time is now, and behold, the day of salvation is now. Now, I understand that we believe that the right time for every single person on planet Earth to be saved is right now, that Jesus did that on the cross, it's paid for, and it's finished, right? And the time for an unsaved person to be saved is right now. We believe that, right? Good. Okay, now I want to tell you what the word saved means and salvation. The word salvation 
is soteria in the Greek. Watch what the meaning is. You can Google it. It's out there. Soteria means to deliver, to be healed. Yes, physically healed. It says physically healed. Uh, and it also says to be delivered, preserved, kept safe and sound. Okay, so where I'm going here today is that our day of salvation, our day of healing, is right now today because it's already been paid for by Jesus on the whipping post 2,000 years ago when the Roman soldiers beat him. That's when he paid for our physical healing on this earth. Watch this now. God made it happen. He put it in a savings account for you in the spiritual realm. So all I'm doing is when I speak healing to someone's body, I'm not trying to get God to give me or to do something. I am drawing out a deposit out of heaven. It's already in the bank account. I'm just authorized by Jesus. Remember, he told me to use his name, his authority. So what I do is I walk up to the counter in heaven and I say, look, Susie needs to see physical healing in her body. And I want to withdraw that healing out of the bank account in heaven. And I want to deposit it from the heaven's account right over into her body. So that's why I pray the way that I do. And I'm going to do one more prayer today because I want to show you a sample of how to pray for people. Here we go. Father, I thank you for Susie. I know that you love Susie and you want her to receive the healing that your son Jesus paid for. It's already there. And Father, I thank you that you have made it available where all I have to do is speak the word. Your word will go out and it will do what it is sent to accomplish and it will never come back void. Father, I thank you that Susie is already healed. By the stripes of your son Jesus, she is healed. So right now, pain, I command you to leave Susie. You have no right there and I tell you to go. Go now. Body, I speak to you and I command every cell and every tissue be healed be made whole in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that Susie is healed and she is made whole. So be it. Amen. Guys, I'm going to let you go today and I'm going to keep talking a little more about prayer because I really want us to get to be a really powerful people who believe God. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.